Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, indeed. It tells you to lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear okay, listener. Okay, yes, all listener. right. Amy Lee Forever's birthday party is happening right now. Yes, sir, um, Bob. There guys... is also a trivia question about yeah. Amy Lee. So she asked... Who wrote my absolute favorite classical music piece? The answers were Bach, also Sorry's favorite, Beethoven, Mozart, or Schubert. And the answer is Schubert, Death and the Maiden is the name of the song. I believe that's her favorite. But that's not the song that we're doing right now. Hopefully you got the right answer. It. But Did somebody she guess is, it? She's adding up the points, and I don't know if she doesn't want to announce it yet or whatever. But well, if she, she announces said, it, put it. She just said it's Death and the Maiden by Schubert. Yep. So. Um, so your points are being added up by Amy, and she's going to announce the winner at the end of the stream, and then there will be a prize for the winner. Oh okay, prize, so listener. the big you guys we're doing in this moment next. I don't know if this is your birthday, Amy, or mine. <laughs> in this moment, Roots is up next. In this Very moment excited about is, this uh, trivia question: One of Soraya's favorite bands of all time. It is. I like it. So I like. I like she loves that vocal style. All right, here we go. In this moment is the name of the song. The name, no, no, no. I mean, the band in, this is in this moment, moment the name of the, the band, the name of the song is Roots, Bloody Roots. Let's do it! Family is everything to me. I am a family um, person. Yeah, I'm a mother, and the, my whole light and and everything is is my my son and my mother. My mother's actually. I have two mothers, and they are sacred to me. And everything that I do, somehow, you know. It's 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 them. It's it's for them. It's about them. I thank you for all the lives you plan. I thank you for every word you shine. I thank you for walking the line. I thank you. I thank you for the promises you broke. I was watching, watching. Thank you for teaching me
really good song. That was a really good. It had some. Oh, uh, it had joining some, us in the dark side. It had some hip hop elements <laughs> in 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 the way they did the beat on the course. Um, some Timbaland shit. You got to be like a maybe XBM. Okay. XBM will know what I'm talking about. Nobody <laughs> okay. else will. But um, I like yeah, it was, it's was heavy. Hard. Yeah, it was, it was heavy. Really, as yeah. Hell. Mm-hmm. And that her vocal style, man, it just communicates something. I just, I love it. Um, yeah, she, she's got a. I know immediately when it's her. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> like she's got one of them voices that vocally you know immediately yep. it's yep. her. Yeah. Um, pull up the lyrics here. It, so, so she's talking about how her family inspires her, right? Her yeah. mom and her her son, and the inspiration that they give her. Yeah. To keep pushing. Which which is uh, you know we moved around a lot so you know my mom always would do these in- introductions you know because we were always new and the new people new family in church new whatever yeah. and and she would always say you know these three right here you know like that's that's my reason for you know doing everything yada 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 and you know. You don't really understand what that means, you know, when you're a kid. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you don't, you don't understand how, I mean, although in our particular situation, uh, we knew that life was difficult, but mm-hmm. we, you don't know how difficult it is for a parent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, her being able to express that was pretty crazy because it brought me back to a lot of, a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. Because you know, like when you when you when you get older, you realize your parents aren't perfect. Obviously, like mm-hmm. you know, we were talking to Orion about this, where he doesn't think that <laughs> we sin or something like that, which is like mm-hmm. the same he as Dorian. Think we ever do anything wrong? It's weird. It's kind of weird, <laughs> but like we apologize to him too. So <laughs> I know it's like so. Oh, how can we say that we're sorry for something if we never do anything wrong? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think he's like figured that out yet. Yeah, <laughs> he put that together. Like, what are you talking? Dorian about? Dorian will be like, "That's why you're the greatest." Right, right. <laughs> He'll be like, yeah, yeah, you apologize. Uh, um, yeah, but um, I think for the hole you dug in me, filled it with cement, sunk me in your sea. Thank you for being so obscene. I thank you for never facing me, swimming in the mud, never coming clean. I thank you for nothing in between. Yes, I thank you for leaving. Whoa. I thank you for leaving, she says. So this yeah. is, a, I'm assuming this is a baby daddy, right? Oh, uh. Mm-hmm. Cause that's not the beginning of the song. That's the that's mm-hmm. the uh, that's like the beginning of verse two, I think. That's so. the beginning of it. Well, I thank you for the lives you led. Thank you for every word you said. Thank you for walking away, for the promises you broke, for watching, watching while I choke. I thank you for teaching me. I thank you for your hurting. I wow. think she also had issues with her dad too. So it could be a double. I think she wrote a song called like "Daddy's Fallen Angel" or something like that. But I don't know. Like the, verse one could be about her dad, and verse two could very well be about her boyfriend or her baby daddy or whatever. But um, her dad did. I think her dad left. I'm not sure. But notice when she talks about her son and her mom, she didn't talk about her dad. Yeah. See what I'm saying in the intro. Yeah. So I think the I think verse one is probably about her dad, and then I think verse two is probably about her. Yeah, um, but how's a dad gonna sit there and watch other. you choke? In other words, you didn't come to help me. Because when you abandon a child, that, that oh. means by default that they're going to be hurt. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's unconfirmed. It's either about her father's abuse or, yes, baby daddy. Yeah, See? that's what I was wondering. I actually think it's both. I think verse one is probably talking about her dad. Um, because remember, she talked about her mom and her son. Mm-hmm. And so the dad would be the triangle, right? It would be daughter, mom, dad. Yeah. And then the son would be her baby daddy son. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I'm and in, get, I get In both you. cases, the, the, the dude left. Yeah. And left them in shambles. But she has had to take that pain and convert it into something productive mm-hmm. for both of those people. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's why I said I think that the verse one is probably talking about her dad. Um but it sounded like she was saying, unless I misunderstood. I thank almost you for like the, the lives you for all the lives you've led, and I thank you for every word you said. I thank you for walking away. Thank you for the promises you broke, 
for always watching, watching while I choke. I thank you for teaching me. Yes, I thank you for your hurting. Yeah, I think that's her and her dad. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to agree with you on that one. Because of the teaching thing, which is usually something that a father does. Right. And the lives you led could be everything else that he was doing besides being a father for her. Right. I mean, he's probably cheating on mom, all types of shit. I, I guess he was kind of abusive. And infidelity and abuse goes hand in hand with dudes. Usually if the, usually if the dude starts like serial cheating and the girl doesn't leave, then abuse happens. Mm-hmm. So that's why I told Shorty like, yo, he's going to start putting his hands on you. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And she called me like three months later. Oh my God, he threw something at me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm in my room. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but she, I mean, she was in her 20s. Tw- I mean, we were both in our 20s. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, but yeah, that, that, that happens. Jeez. Yeah. So, and, and I've always seen like women when they're the ones that are cheating, they get like, they like fighting a lot with, with their spouse. And I wouldn't say necessarily like putting hands on them, but yes. like women when are, they're cheating also start doing some sideways stuff. Yes. Yes, for sure. For sure. I'm sure if there was an equivalence in strength, it would, it would get physical. Too. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that kind of. See that, that that's one of the things that always so me and me and me and my brother, you know, we were in the ghetto for an extended period of time, but we were not we were not ghetto we did not have a ghetto mindset. Right, right. Because, you know, my my mom was, you know, registered nurse, blah blah blah. And and just we came from an area in Jamaica that was like super upper middle class. Mm-hmm. And so, um we didn't come so when we finally made it to the to the ghetto <laughs> I was, was it, eighth grade. And so, our mentality was vastly different from everybody else's mentality. So when we were in the ghetto, people were like, oh, I didn't have a dad, blah, 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 so that's why they're dealing drugs, that's why they're doing this, and that's why, like, I don't want to say excuse, but they used that as a justification for everything that they did. Whereas with us, we were never given that. There was never a time when mom be like, well, you guys didn't have your dad, so this is... It wasn't like that. There was like no... That wasn't on the table. That wasn't an excuse you could give. It was nothing. And like when you go... When when you go down there as a kid, you know, 12, 13, 14, and all these people are starting to say, well, I didn't have a dad and I'm doing X, Y, Z thing. It's just very interesting like how having a strong mother can influence you to the point where you can look above that shit. Mm, So like Amy... That's cool. The dad, you know, dad's gone. He's abusive. Whatever is happening, but the mom communicated so much strength that instead of Amy, instead of instead of her using it as, okay, then I'm just gonna whatever because my dad's not here, or I'm gonna fall into a bowl of depression, which which is completely understandable. She's using that to go harder into her music. Yeah. She's using that as an excuse to propel her to do something creative and do something good for the people that are, are still there that didn't leave her, whether baby daddy or, yeah. or, or boyfriend. Like that, Marla, Maria, Maria, that's right, Maria well, Brink. I see Maria Brink here. Maria Brink is her name. Yeah, she, she, um, she didn't use that as an excuse to turn into a ball and, and, and cry and play the victim. Like she... But she's still crying. Like, I don't have yep. a problem with crying. Yep. She's trying with her yep. music. But you got to, you know, I'm always, always, always going to go to the side of empowerment. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. And that's one of the big things that, like, I wish I could communicate to Zillennials. Because there's a, there's a giant gap in, in, in understanding about that. When I say take responsibility for your own actions in spite of the fact that your dad left you or whatever your sob story is, it doesn't mean that I don't think that those things are painful. What it means is that take back your power. Exactly. Blaming your parents for everything that's wrong and blaming your parents for the situation that you're in is just disempowering. Right. You can be realistic and say, man, this person really did a number on me. Like, mm-hmm. She was with a guy that, you know, pretty sure... Got her pregnant, whatnot, and then abandoned them. You know what I'm saying? Like, and she could have, you know, again, like, I want to be careful about how I, how I say this. Like, she could have said, yeah, I can sing, but let's be practical here. I'm going to go work at Denny's or whatever. And maybe she did work at Denny's for a while while she was, mm-hmm. you know, doubling yeah. as, as, a, as a singer, which, 
you know, making it as a singer is extremely, as a, in a band is extremely difficult, especially in a female fronted band. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, she, she used all that pain to empower herself. Mm-hmm. And, and her vocal style is not like, like Evanescence, that's like, okay, people are going to like that. Even if you're not, that's not your style of music, you're still going to say, wow, that's like unbelievable. This girl's vocal style is, it's unique and it's going to be just a certain group of people that are going to be like, yo, that's my jam. I love that. So when you're coming in with something that's that's less like mm-hmm. palatable for everybody, it, you got to even try. You got to keep. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a different energy you got to go forward with, um, because you have to get your inf- you have to get your music out to more people to gather them more in. Correct. You know? Yeah. I, I love her style. You and think if I you scream a little verse, harder? If you notice in verse one, it talked about like when she said, I thank you for like teaching me. Mm-hmm. And obviously that was through the negative, but that's like what you were saying that every situation that comes into our life lives there, we're going to have negative stuff, but it's, can you find a way to make lemonade out of lemons? Can you find something from that situation that you can take from it that you can use the rest of your life? So then that situation is not only pain and only something that just drags you down. Like if you can learn to empower, find empowerment through those situations, then there's really no stopping you because every bad thing that happens, you're like, okay, I'm going to learn something valuable from this and I'm going to be able to take this and go, go places with it. But like you said, don't deny the pain that you feel or the experience itself. Like you were hurt, then, then, then acknowledge that hurt because you can't deny yourself and expect that that's going to be okay. Like you have to be self-aware. You have to work through the emotions of things. And that's a painful experience sometimes. Um, but that's, that's why we have people around us. Like she said, her, she has a mother, she has a son. And, um, I'm sure, you know. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure like that mom has a bunch of strength, Mm -hmm. a bunch of strength that, that she was able to draw from where she was able to say, I got to come through for my mom. Yeah. And, and then obviously when you have a kid, forget it. I mean, the, 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 the devotion that you have to that little human being is like, I've got a friend right now and she's basically adopted a kid. I don't want to say, I don't want to put up people's business, Mm -hmm. but she's doing great. Yeah. She's doing great. Yeah. And I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud. Yeah. And I don't want to say that because like, we're like, you know, we're friends and shit. I'm like, oh, I'm proud of you. Like, but, but I'm, I'm very, very proud of, of, of that and the the birthday. and, And I think to myself like, yo. Because this is kind of like an adoption situation. I'm like, yo, if Shorty wasn't around, like that, that kid would be in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then that kid, you know, when they become an adult, you know, however long that yeah. she's there with them, taking, you know, getting taken care of by her, mm-hmm. like, who knows what, what path that she's put her on. 100%. You see what I'm saying? Like, 100%. now she's, you know, the decisions, the, 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 Constellation of decisions that make up a person, yep, like it are gonna be changed because 100%. this person decide to take responsibility for mm-hmm. this child that's not technically hers, yep. But yeah, I think she's she's doing birth, I mean, she's doing like the real parenting thing, like doing oh, birthdays and all yeah. that. She's doing great, she's doing yeah. Great. I think that there's there's a lot that gets missed for kids because already, like, as a group, like. You, you, they're kind of like in a, like a box, like they're, they're, well, they're kids, you know? So people kind of like can, you know, push them off to the side and, and not really recognize that like they're significant beings. And I think that there's probably a lot more that they're learning in their formative years than we even realize. And that that affects how they view things the rest of their lives. So, it, you know, you can't, so you true. can't set a cucumber in, in vinegar for, for hours without it changing the, the cucumber. So I think that you know, this child is in that environment with her and the environment may have been very negative, but you know, if, if it wasn't with her. And mm-hmm. so, you know, like, I mean, I, I, I can't speak to the exact thing. I'm just assuming that because the baby's there, like it wasn't mm-hmm. going to be a good spot. So no. she's giving this baby these experiences and these positive experiences, literally changing, I believe this baby's mindset for the rest of its life. Yeah. Neurology for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. uh, epigenetics is a thing. It's right. it's real. It's real. Um, she she. It's it's just incredible. It's it's absolutely incredible. Like the impact that one person can have yeah. on on the 
because I'm sure in her darkest moments, Maria Brink's mother was like, oh, man. I don't think she, I didn't think she's like, yeah, my daughter's going to be a giant mm-hmm. rock star and she's going to inspire all these people and, mm-hmm. and they're going to be, you know, like, mm-hmm. but, but she was just grinding to take care of her daughter in a yeah. horrible situation. Yeah. And obviously, you know, obviously I'm going to be biased towards single moms in those situations because mm-hmm. that's how I came up. Mm-hmm. And my mom was super educated. It was still hard for her because she had to deal with, you know, mental illness. You know, mm-hmm. mental illness kind of canceled out some a lot of times her her uh, brilliance as a as a registered nurse and as a hospital director. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? But so it's it's always going to be a challenge, you know. But my mom, like, she was difficult, but she never she never gave any of us any excuses. Never. We go to new schools, and we hadn't been to school in like two or three months during the school year. And like, I'm like, Ma, I don't know this stuff. She's like, Shut up! You're smart to all them white people in that class. You know that? <laughs> like, she had no, there was no mercy, there's no pity, nothing. And like, I think there were times where she went a little overboard, where she could have been like, a little bit more well. maternal. But it, it kind of gave me a, it, it gave us, it gave us a, a I don't want to say a mean streak, but a. You know, it, it gave us a certain kind of mentality that's been very serviceable. Very, very serviceable. So, shout out to all the single moms everywhere yep. who's out there, oh, you know, gosh, yeah. grinding. Like, I'm not going to disrespect the dads or whatever. You couldn't, you know, I don't know what your guys' circumstances are, but shout out shout out to the single moms everywhere who's grinding doing that shit because, like, that's the ultimate to me because women should not be in that situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just going to say it. Like, they shouldn't be in that situation. Mm-hmm. Because now you're playing mom and you're playing dad in one person, and that's just so unfair. So but, unfair. I, I mean, I experienced the, being a single dad for like two weeks before you swooped in and rescued him. You saw the state of the you saw the state of the environment. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. serious. Like I was like a complete. You know, I was completely. You like, need, you needed some help. Yeah. It, it, like I cannot imagine doing that shit all by myself forever. Mm-hmm. Like that is incredible that what these people are doing, man. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. It's very, very, very inspiring, but it challenges you to try to be a better man, you know, challenges me to try to be there a little bit more for you with the kids and shit, like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a crazy thing to see, but shout out, shout out to my friend who's, who's doing the new mom thing. Yes. Uh, it's fucking 100%. incredible. Very 100%. inspiring. And all you uh, single girls out there that haven't had your babies yet or whatever, like, f- make sure the guy that you're going with. That you you are for sure he's he's gonna spend do the your rest best. of you. Do your you best. Know, the best way to know with that is just get a ring. Get a do, ring is a little helpful, you know. Get you, married, there, then you know that they're committed to to a forever and they want to build with you. There's a logic. Find somebody that wants to build with you and yeah. wants to stay for that building. Yeah. You know, there's lots of people out there. You know, maybe he doesn't make as much as you would hope, or maybe his job is not as thrilling or as exciting as you would wanted it. But can he love you? Can he love your babies? That's the most important thing. And he can, you know, he, he's able to support you in, in a way. So, um, anyway, shout out to Amy Lee forever. Happy birthday. Um, this five. song is a 9.6 for me. Nine uh, nine nine five for nine him. Five for we me. got more. Brought actually, back a lot of, brought back a lot of memories. Though, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. It brought back a lot of memories. That's the, cool. The shelter Look, and all that shit. For, for positive or? I mean, it's positive for me, man. Like it's a, it's a, it was a struggle, you know. I saw her struggle a lot, saw her cry herself to sleep a lot, but Jeez. she did what she had to do, and she made she made men out of us in a, you know, pretty crazy situations. So that's good. Um, last question, guys. All right. Last question. So we have Evanescence. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the question is, what would be my favorite instrument to listen to? Piano, violin, guitar, or what do you say, theremin? Theremin. Theremin. Which one would be her favorite to listen to? Clock is going on Amy's side. We're going to a commercial. We're going to be right back. We shall And you'll return. have the answer on the end of the commercial. Shout out to Creed Forever, by the way. Jumping out of airplanes and shit. We're glad you're alive, buddy. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you soon. Commercial break. 